US creates the mother of all satellite jammers, but not because of some new technology, but because of where these jammers can go. In today's high stakes game of global power, space isn't just a playground for sci-fi nerds like me or astronauts with the right stuff. It's a high-tech battlefield where superpowers like the United States and regional powers like Russia and China are vying for dominance. Hello friends, Wes O'Donnell here, veteran of the US Army and the US Air Force, and the military has given me a ton of fond memories, like reading Leo Tolstoy in Russian while sitting on a beautiful beach in Ecuador, while performing counter-drug operations and sipping on the best piña colada I've ever had in my life. Subscribe if you like what you see, it really helps the channel grow. Okay, let's jump in. In classic military fashion, whoever holds the high ground controls the battlefield, and quite possibly the next global conflict. The importance of protecting US military satellites isn't just about keeping Netflix streaming smoothly, it's about national security, modern warfare, and maintaining an edge over adversaries that are advancing in space faster than you can say, Houston, we have a problem. Satellites are the unsung heroes of modern military operations, from guiding missiles with pinpoint accuracy to enabling encrypted communications. These orbiting platforms serve as the eyes, ears, and voice of US forces around the globe. Satellites make GPS guided bombs land within inches of their targets. They help drones surveil hostile areas from high above and secure communications between soldiers in the field and command centers half a world away. Knock them out and you're left with outdated tactics and a whole lot of guesswork, much the way the Russians are operating in Ukraine today. Now picture this, the US is in a critical situation and troops need air support, but without satellites to communicate that need and guide those aircraft, our military's edge evaporates faster than the iPhone 14's battery at 2%. Satellites are the foundation of every modern strategy, giving the US intelligence on everything from troop movements to ballistic missile launches. In 2021, Russia conducted a test that involved launching a missile into space and blowing up one of its own satellites, a not so subtle flex to show it has the capability to target satellites in low Earth orbit. This action was a clear message that Russia sees disabling US satellites as a legitimate strategy in potential conflicts. China, not one to be outdone, has developed a suite of anti-satellite or ASAT munitions as well. These include ground-based missiles, satellite jammers, and even robotic arms capable of grabbing and moving satellites, while the US also has the ability to kill satellites with kinetic kill vehicles, we have a distaste for creating debris fields that are unpredictable. This desire to avoid the Kessler syndrome has led the Department of Defense down a path of electromagnetic anti-satellite weapons. Kinetic ASAT missiles would harm the very space systems that the US needs for precision targeting, early warning, navigation, communications, and other critical functions. Now, throughout the space race, the US Air Force, Army, and Navy each took turns at developing counter space capabilities, only to find themselves thwarted more often than not by the White House. Back in the late 1950s and the early 1960s, the Eisenhower and Kennedy administrations had a clear goal in mind to preserve freedom of space for American reconnaissance satellites allowing them to fly above international borders without opposition. As you can imagine, this put a damper on military ASAT plans for quite some time, decades even. As technology matured though, things began to shift in 2002, when the Air Force got the nod for two ground-based counter space systems. Congress and the DOD were willing to fund these because unlike previous efforts, they didn't permanently damage enemy satellites. Instead, they produced reversible effects, only temporarily disabling an adversary's ability to spy or communicate. The first of these was the Counter Surveillance Reconnaissance System, CSRS, 
a mobile setup designed to momentarily jam enemy satellites' ability to scope out U.S. military movements. The second was the Counter Communication System, or CCS, a mobile jammer targeting satellite communications to interrupt enemy command and control channels. In 2003, Congress signed off on funding for both programs, but CSRS faced the Budget Acts in 2004, putting an end to its mission almost as soon as it began. Think about it. It was the early days of the War on Terror, and the DoD was like, we're going to Iraq, boys. Put all that money into rippets and 556 ammo. Yeehaw! They probably didn't say yeehaw, but just for those who don't know, rippets are the energy drink of choice for the discerning American infantrymen. CCS, however, stayed the course, reaching Initial Operational Capability, IOC, by the end of 2004. By 2007, the Air Force had deployed three first-generation CCS platforms and had four more on order, along with plans for an upgraded second-generation system. Now, fast forward to today, the U.S. is on track to bolster its space defense with a powerful new ASAT tool called Meadowlands. Originally slated for deployment in 2022, Meadowlands has been held back by delays, but as reported by Bloomberg, those technical issues have now been ironed out and testing is complete. If all goes to plan, the system is set for deployment in 2025, promising a much needed boost to U.S. space-based defense capabilities. Meadowlands relies on ground-based radio frequency jamming to disrupt adversarial satellite communications. Now, China's SIGINT and ocean surveillance satellites rely on RF technology, so these satellites are particularly vulnerable to U.S. access to CCS and dual-use jammers. Think of it as an invisible shield protecting U.S. forces from enemy surveillance while limiting communication between hostile forces. And it doesn't stop there. L3 Harris, the maker of the Meadowlands, has also enhanced its well-established counter-communication system so it can jam enemy signals with just a flip of the switch. According to the Defense Post, the U.S. already operates 16 CCS platforms through the Space Force and Air National Guard. These units, scattered across the U.S. and international locations, have become strategically vital, allowing the military to sever enemy satellite links in real time. Now, Meadowlands will take those capabilities even further, promising more portable, automated, and efficient jamming power. One of the standout features of Meadowlands is its portability. Mounted on wheeled trailers, these radar-like units can be repositioned with ease, making it more difficult for adversaries to pinpoint and counter them. The system enables operators to restore or halt satellite operations as needed, adding a layer of versatility that minimizes detection risks. And here's where we really appreciate the stark contrast between the U.S. and its rivals. The U.S. military operates out of approximately 700 military bases and installations worldwide. If these jammers were stuck in the continental U.S., much the way that Russian and Chinese jammers are, then the system would lose its effectiveness, as satellites would need to directly pass over the jamming country for them to be targeted. America actually ran into a similar issue when it conceived using high-powered lasers to blind Chinese satellites. These lasers are located at fixed sites in the United States. Some of these lasers are certainly powerful enough to damage optical sensors if they are active when satellites overfly them, which would make satellite sensors unavailable for later use in the area of operations. But in wartime, Chinese operators would likely shutter their sensors or just point their telescopes away when known laser sights are in view. But because of Meadowlands portability, these units could be hidden at hot spots across the globe, ready to jam Russian or Chinese birds near areas of operations when needed. It's one of the post-World War II benefits of having the U.S. in everyone's business, or at least in everyone's country. There's also a major training component, as space EW operations require expert control by U.S. Space Force personnel. The goal is simple. Make sure that when it's time to go, operators can execute seamlessly. 
Now, Meadowlands has been designed to avoid creating debris, a significant concern for maintaining a safe space environment by emitting energy that interferes only temporarily. At an estimated $219 million, the Meadowlands program is no small investment, but it represents the cutting edge in reversible space jamming technology. For U.S. forces facing 21st century threats, this system is another tool to secure the high ground 22,000 miles above the Earth. With adversaries actively developing ways to destroy or disable American satellites, the stakes couldn't be higher. The Meadowlands mission is clear. Hold the high ground, protect our strategic assets, and keep the United States on top in a global arena that extends far beyond the Earth's atmosphere. In this new chapter of warfare, the sky is literally the limit. And if there's one thing that history has shown us, it's that failing to secure the high ground leads to defeat, and no one wants to be caught up there without a plan. The big takeaway is this. Meadowlands is non-destructive and deployable nearly anywhere thanks to the global U.S. military footprint and the portability of Meadowlands. And for now, our adversaries are stuck in their respective regions. Keeping the high ground has never been more important. That's it for today. Subscribe if you're not. It really helps the channel. Glory to Ukraine. Glory to the heroes. Slava Ukraini.